How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring you along with me to test out the difference between 10-bit and 8-bit video for color grading. So let's jump right into it. I currently own my Sony a7 III and a7R III that I use for photography and video. They both shoot 8-bit video. So I'm kind of contemplating what the major differences are for the 8-bit versus the 10-bit when it comes down to the color grading and how much you can push the tones and everything like that when it comes down to adding LUTs and everything in between. I don't personally own a 10-bit video camera or anything like that, but I do have some footage from the FX6 that Mark Bone put out on his video on his channel that he put out to download to just test it out and see how you liked it. So I'm using that footage today to compare it to some footage that I took earlier with my Sony a7 III. The main thing that I'm gonna wanna look into this test is just to see how much will the color grade hold and how much will it fall apart for one to the other and see which one would be better when it comes down to color grading in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna be applying the same style of edit since they're both gonna be shoot and log and then apply my own LUT that I usually use for my color grade and just see how how much better it holds with a 10-bit versus the 8-bit or if there's not much of a difference whatsoever just to see what I want to do for the future. I currently don't own a 10-bit video recording capability camera but eventually want to do own one whether it's an A7S 3 maybe the new upcoming FX3 that's supposed to be coming out soon or maybe I don't know we'll see. I mean, right now, that's kind of where I'm at with the video capabilities. I want to see what I can create with what I have and to see if it's even worth it to be forking over that much money when it comes down to upgrading. Obviously, there is some good comparisons for the 10 bit for how much more room you have for color grading at least that's everything that i've researched because it has more information when it comes onto the files but i want to see if i can get away with my camera that i currently own or is it really that much of a difference for whenever i decide to upgrade and go for something with 10 bit video recording internally so we're going to look at the footage right now and i'm going to apply the color grading and show you what i do all on my computer and see what happens so let's get through this testing together. All right, so here is the footage from Mark Bone. This is basically it raw. That's how they sent it. I believe he used S-Log 2, maybe S-Log 3, but I'm not 100% sure uh, with it. I can't remember for the life of me right now. But anyways, I use a converter LUT that I got for like for S-Log 2 footage. I don't usually use this one anymore, but because I have a certain setup that I'll talk about here shortly. But anyways, I used it for this to bring it back. So I'm gonna show you that popped on. And then I add my, uh, my basically my Lumetri color adjustments to add to it and then here is my personal uh, just to kind of add the look that I usually have for my videos. So I'll play this video for you just to kind of show you how it looks. Um, that That's basically it. I'm going to zoom in I think to like 75 or even like 150 just to show you like how the skin looks I guess through it. Um, it might be just because of my personal kind of style of blood that it might not work for this one and then there's my face. Well anyways. Uh, so that's my face. Uh, we're gonna go back to fit. Uh, ignore my ugliness of face right there. But, so I'm gonna show you as well what I did. So I'm gonna start turning these layers off, the adjustments. So this is how my footage looks straight off the bat. One big difference that I have for mine versus um, the other one is I have a different sort of uh, conversion LUT. So if you know who Becky and Chris uh, are, they're a YouTube channel and they had this uh, conversion LUT to reduce the noise from the S-Log2 footage for 8-bit cameras because it does a lot of banding with like certain colors like it brings a lot of magentas and greens to random areas so I got that and it's helped me out to do just better color grading in my opinion um, the one thing that I do is I have it set up where the saturation of the S-Log2 is up to 24 because it doesn't affect the colors more about the contrast to keep that dynamic range so that's why it looks more saturated straight off the bat without having to add too much later on. So if I start adding my adjustments, um, this is my Lumetri color adjustments. As you see that it starts to bring it back to normal. And then I'm gonna turn on the adjustments of the conversion LUT, if you will, to just bring it like that. So you see how it's a little bit more punchy with the color so I don't have to add as much later on. I mean, I have it here where I can literally just bring it back and that should be fine. Um, I added that just to kind of test around if I wanted to add it or not. And then this is with my 
LUT. So there you go. That's basically how it looks. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, I did some minor adjustments with this all as well. Just kind of keeping it nice and leveled, if you will. This is my Lumetri tab. So as you see, the, the blacks got a little bit close down there. So I might have to just move them up a little bit since I started using, um, what's it called the color wheels so I'm gonna I'm just trying to see how much I can push it really to see if it makes sense uh, when it comes down to the color green for an 8-bit camera so if I zoom in I'm gonna move on to a little spot right here to see this way I can zoom in at 75 it looks pretty good it doesn't look too horrible with the color I'm just gonna play the footage itself it seems like it's sticking pretty well with it so it's not horrible with the color grading that I'm trying to do it is it is a little bit I can tell sometimes a little bit like noisy just because of um, the 8-bit kind of color depth if you will that doesn't like let it push too too much but overall it's very pleasing to the eye to me um, this is another footage that I was using for more farther away just to show you kind of basically how it would look with a full body kind of style if I wanted to color grade something like this style. As you can see right over here by the bushes, I'm going to try to zoom in. Um, let me go even further. So I'm going to go over here. It starts kind of losing its detail and like just makes it look weird. I mean, I know I'm shooting, I think I was shooting like 2.8 with the f-stop but to blur out the background a little bit but it still looks a little bit in my opinion at least like kind of like falling apart but it's not horribly bad that you would be noticing that off the bat right away so if i play it again you're obviously going to be centered more into me and seeing how i look because that's the center of attention with the focus point so now we're going to go back and just kind of just play this one again to show you the color look I, I really like the way the fx6 looks obviously it's a more expensive camera um if i zoom into like 150 that's what i want to see with the color um if it kind of how it stays with it i don't know what settings they shot it at but i like how it looks it looks a lot very nicely done obviously the color itself pushes it pretty well i mean it's not falling apart in my opinion too badly it might just be because of my LUTs as well, but then that's the comparison for my footage. Um, obviously the sensor might be a difference and all that stuff, but I'm gonna set them side by side now just to kind of show you what they would look like and see how, um, you know, how, how they'll turn out, out to look within each other basically. All right, so here are the side-by-side -side comparisons with the color grading. I mean, it's up to you to decide what do you think it looks like, what, what's better, what's not. Um, obviously, they're different kinds of videos, but I think uh, it's, it's good to just see details when it comes down to these um, videos themselves. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit different scenario of what they were filming to what I'm filming and where I'm at, but it's still pretty cool to see that it can hold itself pretty fairly um, when it comes down to the color grading itself. Because if I go from here to there, obviously it might be just uh, the, the lighting as well for them. I mean, it looks really smooth um, with my type of edit that I would usually do to versus mine. I mean, I also was using a diffusion filter just because I like to use them a lot. But yeah, this is just a little bit of a comparison just to see how it would look with the color grading with both and see what just looks nicer if it makes sense to even change my camera or not but i mean it's not overly horrible difference i mean i can tell that it would probably look better if i had more um, of the 10 bit internal kind of style of um, capabilities with my camera but overall it looks pretty good in my opinion still regardless of um the 8-bit versus 10-bit so even with the setup that i have i think it's worked out pretty fairly well so there you go that was a quick little comparison showing you the difference between 8-bit and 10-bit video and how to color grade it and see how much it can push itself to see if it falls apart or what you can do with it that's the regular style that i would use the video capabilities for like color grading my videos so that's what i wanted to do with this video to see how much can i push it would it make that much of a difference when it comes down to the video capabilities of color grading for the cameras and if it's worth it to even begin upgrading right now eventually i think 
think it will. Right now, for what I'm using it for, I think it's perfectly capable. Obviously, the 1080p at 120 will fall apart faster because I've, I mean, even with my setup currently, I know it falls apart faster. So having the 10 bit uh, 422 when it comes down to the 120 in slow motion would be great. That would be the more ideal of a reason of why I would want to upgrade. So I'm waiting to see what the a7 IV comes and brings to, to the table since it should be announced hopefully soon. Um, even see what the FX3 has in store and the price range and see if it makes sense or if it's better to get the a7S3 depending on the bang for your buck kind of style. But so far I think the 8-bit for the a7 III, the type of way that I edit it and the setup that I have thanks to Beck and Chris's um, tutorial if you will if you haven't seen it I'll leave it down below so you can see what it can do for your video and see if it will help you out when it comes down to color grading and having better look to your video so it doesn't fall apart as easily that's what I did so hopefully it can help you out as well but with all that said and done guys thank you so much for watching this video make sure to like and subscribe share this video with a friend and I'll catch you guys on the next one see ya